Right. I'm live. What's really funny is that the thumbnail did not work. So uh, here we go. Hold on. Share it. Copy the link. All right. I'm going to share it on Patreon. Sorry, guys. I'm like not being very cast with Filippo. Um, hopefully it's still going. That doesn't say that it's live anymore. There we go. Okay. So I have many things to talk to you about. I hope that everybody is surviving. I have my little, let me change this little box over here. And say, do you need a glass? You got a glass with something in it. <laughs> All right, you need a glass with something in it. Okay, so I need to see if I can, oh, I know. I can probably see if it posts it on Patreon this way. Anyway, I see, link? what? Do you need the link? No, I copied it, but I don't know if it's working. Anyway. All right, so hopefully hopefully others will get the link. I'm sorry, I had a little bit of technical difficulty, let's say, but now we're hoping to, we're waiting for people to show up. What's up, MCS? Living the dream. Living the dream. All right, this is the link I'm seeing at YouTube, Les is saying, I don't know. Um, MCS, can you, if I send you the link, can you see? There's a couple, okay, there's a couple of people watching now, so now I think we're okay. Can you see it? You probably can, it's unlisted. It's on YouTube? Yeah. I don't know, we shall see. We shall see published links. There's three people, let me see. Um, I'm gonna send it to you, MCIs, and you can tell me. I just wanna wait for a couple more people to show up, but I I have some I have some good gossip on Amarone. I've got, all right, Lu, all right good, Les has got it here. Let me put it in the, the thing. Um, and we'll hopefully make this work out. All right, four people are watching. Are you one of them? No. No, because you can't get in because it's unlisted. It. It's Why an un you should list it. That way more people can get access to it. Well, I can't list it because this is just for patrons. And, I don't, and, I, and I'm not uh, going to let the masses me. in here. What? Hold on. I'm, I'm going to put it here. You are a patron. Yes. What, what's your pseudonym? You got something going on. What's I your, don't know. what's your, you don't even know what it is. No. Okay, we got seven people here. K Kelsey's in, we're in. All right, here we go. And I just added it to the post. So now more people should be able to get in. All right, so how's everybody doing? Everybody's super not bored. Wait, I know how, that. What is it? How do I get in? Oh, I guess I'll have to text you. To I could text it to you. You want the link? What's your, what's your phone number? <laughs> um, all right. Eight six seven five three zero nine. We actually tell our children that our phone number is eight six seven five three zero nine, and if any of you know what that is, then winner, winner, but, chicken dinner. But you, you gotta, you gotta um, clarify that. What? That they also know our real numbers. Oh, they do. So yes, like they know our real phone numbers. That's not true. They're telling the police to call eight yes. six seven five three zero okay. nine to get in touch with. I have several things to tell you. The first thing is, did you see the thumbnail for this? It took a picture of our curtains. It's hilarious. That's going to be the thumbnail for this going forward. Second of all, okay, so Am I'm sure. Amarone? Amarone? Every. Oops. Yeah, you got to mute, mute that. Second of all, oh. um, I hope everybody is doing well and that you're not too bored. I think that that's probably like the biggest problem. But I think also it's. Is it? There's. You know, there's <laughs> really? We have children. I mean, with no, if you're healthy, obs, obs. All right, so we're going to talk about Amarone. I'm sure that nobody had time to listen to this very long podcast that I do with Filippo. It's actually a really great show. He does very well when he is less. I know you can change your thumbnail in YouTube Studio. I will definitely do that after. But if anybody looks at it right now, it's hilarious. Uh, because I'm actually looking at what I sent MC Ice in the text, and it literally is just curtains. It looks like an ocean of curtains. <laughs> anyway, so the um, the podcast with Filippo is really good. A couple of things. I think he's a little, I like Filippo, but he is a little bit, um, what's the right word, MC Ice? Italian. So he's sometimes like. Dramatic? No, it's not really dramatic. Animated? Not really animated, more like sometimes Surly? you don't get a, a really good answer that you're sure is like 100% like the whatever the deal is. So anyway, um, I believe he is, he works for, he does some, I don't know what work. He does some work for Amarone and Valpolicella. 
So like he works for the consortia. So I know that that's, that's definitely true. So he knows a lot about it. Um, I don't know if he was doing this as like in, in his role as a paid spokesperson, but he did a great job on the show. So if you ever had any questions about like what Amarone is, uh, first of all, the one thing that you should know is, okay, so this is a bottle of Amarone, which if you watched me on WRAL, you will see wow. our, ki our kids go, oh, Amarone, because oh. I said Amarone. So on the back, this is one of the producers, Ka de, de Maggi, and this is an Amarone della Vaporicella. So the thing to know about Amarone is that it is not, not Valpolicella. It's made in Valpolicella. Valpolicella is this area. It's an, the area of the 13 valleys. It does not come from Italian. It comes actually from Latin and, or from the dialect that was there at the time, but is derived off, derived from Latin. And there's 13 valleys there and they're not all created equal by any means. And then, there are also flats outside of those valleys. So the rule, of course, in Italy is hillsides good, flats not so good. And again, in Filippo's capacity or his like capacity as a spokesperson, I think he he skirted around a little bit the idea that the valleys were crappy, but he he kind of admitted it. He also did admit that. Amarone is a tough wine for him, as it is for me too. So I think that that's important to know. So what is it? We go over in the podcast, but very quickly, it is Amarone and Val Val I'll go over Valpolicella. Valpolicella is a blend. It's never one grape, although it can be up to 95%, either a grape called Corvina or Corvinone, which I swear to you, when I started in wine, was not even a grape. Like it wasn't even something people even knew about. So it's kind of funny how things change so quickly. I mentioned this in the podcast, but literally like if you look at my certified specialist of wine book, I don't even think they mentioned Corvinone because I, Filippo says it in the show, like we just thought it was a big version of Corvina. Just like in Chile, we thought that Carmenere was just shitty Merlot which it turns out it was actually good Carmenere, but it would be considered shitty Merlot because Carmenere really is not nothing like Merlot. And if you were expecting Merlot in your glass, you got Carmenere, you'd be like, wow, that really sucks. So anyway, Corvignone, Corvignone is, I think Philippa said they're not related. They actually are related, but they're not the same grape. And then there's this grape called Rondinella, which is fine, and then Molinara, which is generally considered a really crappy grape that nobody really wants to use and they're trying to phase out. So that's the deal, it's a blend of three grapes. It doesn't matter whether it's Amarone or like crap volicella that's growing at the bottom of the barrel, those are the grapes. And the other thing about Amarone that nobody says, and I don't even think we said it in the show as I was editing it, I was like, ooh, we did not mention this. You know, you could do Amarone from the worst parts of the valley. So like you, it, Amarone is not, Amarone is a way to make the wine, but it's not an area. Valpolicella is the area. Amarone is the wine type. So that presents a whole host of other questions that, Filippo and I did not go into in the podcast, but I will just raise, and of course, if you want to comment, I'm more than happy to answer those comments, but like, you know, Amarone is a wine that is made basically from raisining or desiccating grapes or drying them in the rafters. And That's why you told our daughter this would taste raisiny to her. Well, and I told uh, some unnamed person who happens to be watching this right now that it was a little bit like raisin juice, and it is um, when it's made well. And I, I did, really like raisiny I wine. did cant like this. It. Let's hope that my five year old doesn't break this decanter. She broke the last one, so um, this is my my latest version of a inexpensive decanter. And if it breaks, I won't cry or die. Did you pour yourself some of this? I did. Okay, I like how's it. you do? <laughs> yeah. like oh, Ellie, stop it! I don't Come like, on. Uh, raisiny. <laughs> Wow. Well, we'll see if it's raisiny. This is one of Filippo's recommended ones, but this is also a sample from Valpolicella. Okay, so anyway, when we think about this, 
It raises some issues. I'm just looking on the bottle to see. It's 16% it alcohol. It raises some issues? Ha, 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 ha. Hi, Logan. I'm so glad you could make it. I know. It, Sam, Ellie is out there. The truth is out there. She's out there barking either at a fire truck, a train, or an owl. One or the other. Or the cat. Or, three. or the black cat, Bobby. There's a black cat named Bobby that lives in our neighborhood. He's a real dick, let me tell you. Anyway, we can get into that another time. So... So I'm running, it, this poses a lot of problems because you, all you're doing is desiccating the grapes. Does it matter where you get the grapes from? I mean, I would argue obviously like all of this matters, but then again, if you're desiccating the grapes and raisining them, I don't know if that really matters. Um, I think, you know, Amarone is a is one of these wines that's like by process. That being said, like champagne is also a wine that's made largely through human processing. However, if you don't get the vineyards right, it really doesn't taste good. So, and there's a difference, you know, there's a difference. So, so I don't, I think garbage in, garbage out. I think there are some really cheap Amarones for all of our Trader Joe's fans. We've seen that like $30, $20 Amarone at Trader Joe's. I feel like they even have one for like 19. That's going to be from the flats. I'm just telling you that right now. So one of the main challenges with Amarone is this whole idea of the 16% alcohol. I mean, you can see it. Hopefully you can see it right there. 16%. Is it That's really? a lot, man. Wow. Yeah. I mean, they can't really do much. What are you going to do? I mean, it is what it is. And, and I think Philippa brings up a good point, which I have brought up before also, which is that it's about balance. So if the wine is balanced, you just got to make sure you're going to get hammered off of it quick, more quickly. And I will tell you that when I was in Verona recently and I had more... Um, uh, Amarone, it, it really does go, like, it gets you drunk fast. Nice, <laughs> nice you say. It, wait, well, wait, it would be nice if we did it when the, we, like, we had it when the children were awake, but. No. So I'm just looking at this. Okay, so so it really does smell like raisins to me. And, and I think that's a typical version of Amarone is that it totally is going to smell like raisins. Is anybody else, is anyone else drinking Amarone out there? The truth is out there. Anything? I mean, again, yeah, I hope you're drinking something. Tell me that you're drinking something, all 13 of you that are that are listening currently um, or watching. Write down what you're, wait, I can see your comments. I can see your comments, so make them happen. But, um, I mean, this, this wine really does smell like raisins. You don't think so? It also smells like alcohol. It, it is hot. But Sparkling Vouvray and Fried Chicken you Girl. Go. You what? go. Sparkling Vouvray and Fried Chicken. She's got wow. it. She's got Where it. Where did you find chicken? <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh. I don't know about you guys. Like, I don't eat chicken, but the dog needs the chicken. There's no chicken anywhere in the state of North Carolina. Sauvignon Blanc and Chinese food delivery. Way to go. K Kylan or Kaylin, Kaylin, Kylan, Masan La Belle Vie, Rose, Rorero. Way to go, Neil. I love Rorero. Um, oh gosh, Neil, you just reminded me. Shoot. All right, tomorrow, Neil. Oh, you found an Amarone at the. Carrie found an Amarone in South Dakota. Way to go. Uh, Kelsey opened a Nuit Saint George. Lynn is drinking a Rapasso. Lynn, I know you asked me some questions. I'm going to get, get back to you after this. Bonnie Dune Syrah. Love it, right? Um, and, and Claudette, you're drinking like a, a, an heirloom because Randall Graham just sold that. Who knows how much longer he'll be, he'll be uh, making that. I just, hold on, I just missed Douglas's comment on. Patreon, but I'm gonna go over to it. Um, so yeah, so I think Amarone is really crazy in that it smells like raisins, it smells like alcohol, and it is, hold on a second, and it is rough. Okay, Douglas is saying it's kind of like a real Rioja in that it's more like aging than the actual quality of the grapes. No, Rioja is all about the quality of the grapes. Actually, Rioja would be more about the quality of the grapes than Amarone because Rioja is, although you do age it, you have to get the base blend correct. And that is a still wine not made in any other way except aging in oak barrique. Now, if you're gonna age it, depending on the barrels, like Rioja, they use a lot of very large barrels. So in that case, the wine is really just sitting and not absorbing a lot of the oak. A Reserva, for instance, or Gran Reserva, is gonna have less oak flavor, it, or it should, than a Crianza, because or unless it's been sitting in small barrique. So 
because because as that wine gets older in that barrel, like the barrel is getting older and releasing less, the wine is aging, all of that kind of stuff. Kevin's saying, um, Honorio Vera Garnacha. Um, is it boozier? Because I missed that comment. Can you can you go back to the drink an inexpensive Amarone from Trader Joe's? Yeah, that's the one I was talking about. Fourteen percent alcohol. All right, so I'm just sitting here is smelling. It boozier? Which, uh, who, uh, I think Logan asked that. Logan, is it boozier because the grapes uh, become over ripeish? Yes. So it's boozier because when you take raisins, right? When you raisin something, you're concentrating sugars. And in order to ferment that stuff, the yeast is gonna have to eat all that sugar, and it's gonna have to be pretty powerful yeast. They, they almost always, that was the other thing we did not discuss in the podcast, but I'll tell you now, they have to use inoculated yeast. They have to use, they have to, they have to because natural yeast is not strong enough to fight that. Kelsey's saying, I thought it was interesting how Filippo was talking about Amarone was basically made out of necessity. Yes, that's really fascinating too. We'll talk about that in a second. but. So you have to use inoculated yeast because it, otherwise it's the regular yeast, natural yeast is not strong enough to, to eat all of that sugar that comes out of the raisins, right? Mm -hmm. So you're, you're over, the grapes are overripe. They've got very high levels of alcohol and then the yeast will have to eat that to turn it into 16, 17% alcohol. When I was in Verona, I had wine, Amarone that was 17% alcohol and it was Little tough to take. This is not tough to take, though. No, it's fine. It's not. It's a little I hot. It fine. It's a little hot. Mm. You don't find it hot? I find it a little hot. No. Uh, no, I, not really. Not. What I like about it is it of. smells really floral and bright. You do like the floral. Well, this has a lot of floral notes, so it smells bright. But then, um, it is tastes a little raisiny. It's heavy in the back. Yes. It's heavy in the mouth and it's and it's hot and burning from the alcohol so Kelsey I think that's a really good point so you know the the way that that all of these wines used to be made Repasso and now we're drinking out of necessity you got it Claudia we are I mean I have been just just as a background note just so you know because I want to offer more online classes for everybody to be able to take um, and I don't know if anybody saw this or heard it, but I'm going to be offering like a, a basically a coupon singles rate. So if you're alone, I will give you a coupon code and you can enter and take any class that you want because I know that you're, you know, that it really sucks. But one of the things I have been doing behind the scenes is kind of checking in with some of my, uh, the, like the main online retailers that I use to see what their deal is and whether they're staying in business. It does seem like, Aster is the only one that I'm a little bit worried about, but everybody else, really? Wine Library seems like they're fine. I don't love them, but they're they're very reliable. Uh, Saratoga Wine seems like they're fine. K&L seems like they're okay if you're in a place where you can get that. So there will be some places if you can't get it locally that you can order it from. And already like um, people are thinking ahead, which I really like because if, if in case you're, I don't think that the local stores are going to shut down though. I mean, I think that they'll find a way they'll get scrappy and because not that many people work in wine stores anyway, and people are going to have to be doing logistics and delivery. So I'm not overly concerned and you shouldn't be either about getting your wine. However, if you want to nestle down and tuck into a case or two, <laughs> just to be sure, there are some really good deals to be had. I just ordered two cases from Saratoga Wine Exchange, who, um, for those of you who have listened for a very long time, you know, Vinport was um, a, was a partner of mine. I loved them. They were so great. We, were, we had so many plans to do great things together, but Peter couldn't make it work. And he was actually gonna take over Saratoga Wine Exchange. So I know that they're actually pretty cool people. Yeah, they're nice people. So they're good to support and um, if you, and they're out of Saratoga, New York. So if you get in a bind and you need wine, you can, you can do that. But I will keep you guys posted, especially on what I hear from the back end of things. I'm also gonna be talking to Tom Work for the podcast, but we'll be asking him about, you know, these jinky rules about online shipping and whether or not the National Association of Wine Retailers is going to go after like states that don't allow interstate shipping of wine because I think that's bullshit. They should definitely take those barriers down for now. Anyway, all right, back to Amarone. So Filippo was saying that 
it was made out of necessity and that is it's true meaning that okay kylan could you speak about the tannin and acid level my experience is medium tannin and medium and acidity um yeah let me i will get to that in a second so um Filippo was saying that the grapes what used to happen is that Rapasso, or the, the way that they used to make these wines was they would have to raisin them and either do Rapasso or the Amarone style um, or Ricciotto, which is a sweet wine. They would have to do it because the grapes would not get ripe. Now, if you have had an, a Valpolicella from a bad producer in a bad year, you still see some of this, that they're on sites that don't ripen the grapes all the way. So you have this really bad, bad, high acidity and high bitterness factor, and it's not good. Um, they are, they are not, they're just, they're, they're not good wines. They're thin and not good. So I understand from that perspective, before climate change, before things warmed up, in years that they could not get the warmth, they would raisin those grapes. I, I don't know if, I, I guess my question to that is, you're drying grapes. If you didn't get the ripeness the first time, now you're raisining grapes that aren't quite ripe. What did that taste like? Like, I know the alcohol levels were lower, but like, then you lose all this structure. You have high acidity, and then the tannins aren't fully developed, and neither are the flavors, right? So that's what you get when you get a full level of ripeness. I would say that those wines were probably quite odd. Like, they were probably really sharp, and then at the same time had high alcohol. It's just, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm saying like you're looking at me like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't know. Um, on the acidity and tannin level for Amarone, um, it, you know, it's one of these things that really depends on the producer and depends on the vintage. So it depends on the site also. Acidity is coming directly from the grapes and the blend of grapes used, okay? So in a cooler vintage on a cooler site, or mixed in with grapes that have higher acidity levels, Corvina would be one of them, then you're going to get grapes, you're gonna get wines that are higher acidity. But I have had many uh, an Amarone where it's flat. There isn't a lot of acidity at all. And the alcohol is so soft and juicy. It's like Napa Cabernet is has this problem also. That's why I made the comparison in the show to this. That there's just, it gets too ripe it's too warm and then you get flatness. You don't get the acidity to counterbalance the alcohol. And if you go back and look at one of the very early videos that I made for you guys, for patrons only, about the structure of a wine and I put together like this, these little magnetic blocks that my kids have and talked about how it's like a picture frame. If the acidity is not there to support its side, the alcohol just takes over and so, that has to do with sight, blend, and vintage. So I don't think there's a rule on acidity, but a good producer should have a decent amount of acidity. And tannin, I find tannin is very low in Amarone also because, again, once you once you raise in these grapes, you know, you've really, you, you have taken the grapes all the way to ripeness where they should have tannin. But what Filippo said in the podcast is quite true. They don't, press the grapes. They only use free run juice out of Amarone. And if you do that, you don't get tannin. Tannin comes from, you know, this, this idea of push of having that skin, the skin and the seeds. If you take free run juice, you just press the, press the grapes. You're not really getting an opportunity to get high tannins. So in my opinion, not medium tannin, pretty low tannin for Amarone mm -hmm. and, and pretty low acidity. And it's really a wine that has a lot of alcohol. Again, the better ones are definitely going to have good acidity, but it's hard to find that. I mean, honestly, you just don't have that like lovely mouth-watering, you know, deliciousness out of it. I don't know. Um, but I mean, overall, I would say these wines are really big. So they're either, I think they're either for you or not for you. Like, I feel like they're pretty polarizing. What do you, are you going to say it's meh? No. I, as I said, I I don't usually like when it's overly raisiny, but I don't find maybe it's the alcohol cuts through that. I think this me. tastes so raisiny and like pruney. It's more pruney than raisiny. It's and very pretty. Pruny this. You can deal with pruney. Yes. All right. Yeah, I get both pruney. I get pruney on the like when I taste it, and then um, 
raisiny on the like on the finish. I can see that. Yeah. Okay. And that's just like that's not usually I like the freshness a little bit more. Yeah. But I think if you like that raisiny, like if you like really big zin, Amarone is great, you know? Um, someday maybe Filippo and I will do like a whole thing where we where we do, you know, zin and cab. Kelsey's saying you said in the podcast, I feel like it's totally against current wine trends. Yes, it is against current wine trends. Also, just in case you were wondering, I just got a rain alert, Mark. <laughs> Ooh, I gotta get the bikes in. Oh, you should, yes. Um, and the gate. Kevin, I have not seen that wine thing, but is it like a Coravin? I mean, if it's like a Coravin. Look, you know, I like the Coravin, and they were a great sponsor, and I like it. The reason that I like it is because, so for instance, I'm going to teach the Wines of Italy class on Saturday. Now, there is a possibility now that I posted it that I will maybe add another section and teach it again on Sunday. But if I don't do that, likely I will, you know, I will use the Coravin for some of those bottles. Not all of them, because we're going to drink some of them, but I will use a Coravin for some of those bottles. Um, so I like it because I can preserve it. But whatever the, the, I think you called it the report. What is it? It's a cork that has some type of substance in it that removes the air in the bottle. That's interesting. Well, I, I would like to, uh, I will look into that a little bit more. Drop me, um, drop me a note on, on Patreon, and I will look into it a little bit more and see see what maybe I'll give it a try so no I'm not by the way I just because I like a product doesn't mean that I'm like a hundred the only thing I'm 100% tied to all the time is my cork puller only because I've tried a million of them and it's the only one that I love and I also am pretty tied to my my um my glassware suggestions that I got that I you know that I did in the from that that article that I did in Epicurus I think Zalto is definitely the best glass I think Spiegel Out is great also, but you know, there are a bunch of other ones that we tried out that were really awesome. So again, I'm open to all, any and all things. And also like there's always new stuff invented. I mean, honestly, eight years ago, Corvin didn't exist. So, you know, why not? Why not try something new? Um, I think that's pretty much all I was gonna say about Amarone. I love my Zaltos, Lisa. Oh, Lisa, girl, I am so with you. We love it too, but I will only use it when I know that A, there's no children around because those things are spindly. Did I ever tell you guys that Zalto, I'm not sure if I told you this, Zalto went bat s crazy on the article. Did I tell you this? I collect branded, oh, that's nice, Les. I love my cork puller. I, it is, it is, my cork puller has opened a bazillion bottles and uh, I love it. So I'm glad that you approve. So did I tell you, I don't know if I told you guys the story about, about Zalto and the Epicurious article, but they wrote and said, recently my wife and I got to love Amaron a great deal on Cesare 2014. Um, here, I'm going to have to look back on Patreon for that comment. So um, I'm never going to get to this gossipy story. Hold on a second. So... So, okay, Siva said, 24, 2014, a light vintage. It was a bit thin. How long should one age Amarone for good and light vintages? Well, it's never going to get heavier, right? So if it is like a, a softer vintage or something that doesn't have the kind of power. And by the way, this goes back to the question that... I think Douglas asked about the grapes. It does really matter what the vintage is, right? Because because Siva is really saying the exact thing that is proving this. In 2014, we had a vintage that was not as powerful. Those wines will never develop power. What's going to happen is that they'll get more what we call the tertiary flavors. They they might become more like mushroomy over time. Right. Maybe they'll become more like leather. They might become a, a little more earthy. Maybe they might actually go on the other side of it and become more pruney and they may become less like balsamic and more like vinegar with time. So I would drink the lighter vintages more quickly um, than the heavier ones, unless you like some of those earthier characteristics. If you like those, they may develop nicely because if we think about a burgundy over the course of time, that's going to change, right? Um, Logan saying we have a Coravin program at the restaurant allows us to serve unique stuff. Yeah, the Coravin is really, really great. The only thing is, Logan, and I know that you will vouch for this, is that it is not as 
It doesn't have the lasting impact that they say, like you can't cordovan something for like two months. Really, once you keep opening it over and over again, the thing's got a week or two week span on it. So, or two, two it's to three weeks. It's perfect if you're going to open it and you know that you're not going to drink it again for another week or two. Well, it's minutes. perfect if you open it right. one time and then right. you're not going to eat it, drink it again for a month, right? But the thing is, if the more times you dip into it, the you worse it's going to get. For a month. Well, no, I mean, if it's a really special bottle, what they no, claim, what they claim is you could open it once a year and yeah, like the first year it'll be slightly, it's some oxygen is going to get in the second year though. Like maybe there's maybe between year one and year two, it would be fine. But once you start dipping into that thing, I mean, it's just, it, it doesn't work. All the reps that I know that use it and folks who work in restaurants that use it say that like, you know, the thing gives it, it does give it like two weeks, which is way better than what you could have before. But it, once you start dipping into it and pour it for people, it, it, it's going to start to degrade. Now for home use, it's a little different, right? You pour right. two, two glasses of it yes, and then you can take it out. And then, you know, in another six months, you could pour another two, but is it going to last five years? I don't know. They claim it does. Um, what were we talking about? The age of age of vintages. So the other thing that I'll say Siva is that, that, you know, the bigger vintages are also, they also can be problematic for aging, right? Because you have all of this fruit. So if you don't have the tannin and acidity to support them, they won't age well. That being said, a lot of times you get these balsamic notes out of the bigger kind of brawnier wines with time. So you'll get more kind of lighter vinegar notes with the lighter vintages, but you'll get more of that balsamic leather note with the heavier vintages. Again though, all of that is predicated on the fact that there's acidity and tannin. Because if there isn't and all you have is fruit and the fruit that's being used is not great, it, the, you know what, the, wine, the rules in winemaking are, are so, um, you know, really just try to remember, like garbage in, garbage out, right? That is the deal, right? Garbage in, garbage out. You're gonna have crappy, crappy, Logan's saying one week. That's interesting, Logan. I hadn't heard that little, but I totally believe you, especially if you're putting it, putting it in like twice or three times a day. So anyway, the, the thing is that the, the, you know, garbage in, garbage out on, and I don't care what it is, right? It doesn't matter how much. Take the garbage out, by the way. Thank well, you thank, you. thank you. Oh, I was I was actually reminded while I was walking Ellie, but I forgot to tell you to take the garbage out. Oh um, is the garbage quarantined? Yeah. Oh, okay. It is. Okay. It's six feet away from our neighbor's garbage. Okay, good. As well. okay, so we just want you to know we're per, we are doing social garbage thank distancing. Um, so, so the the garbage in, garbage out. That's one. Two is, it depends on who gets their hands on the grapes and what they do with it. So it sucks to have to know producers. And it used to be, you know what, it really has gotten so much harder because now that there's so many more producers, there are so many, like the proportions have changed, right? There's, there's a bunch of, it's like everything else. There's a bunch of meh, there's a bunch of suck, and then there's a couple of really, really good ones at the top. And so it, what our job is, is to ask people like Filippo who are in the region and know these kinds of things. Like who are the producers? Who are the up and coming producers? Where should we look for wines that are of good value? And you know, what can we afford? And I always ask him questions like that. And I try to get that out of, you know, anybody that I talk to, because really what we're trying to do is figure out what is the best that we can get. And then within that can you do you know it, and that's why i like doing stuff on the appellations but it's really hard for me because i don't know what wines you all can get i mean like carrie i hate to pick on you carrie but carrie is in south dakota she's gonna have a harder time with access she's gonna have to go online to get that stuff mm -hmm. um you know claudette is in buzzards bay on the cape she may sometimes have a really easy time getting wines from Europe, much easier than someone in California, but she may have a challenge getting some wines that somebody in New York could get. You know what I mean? So like we're all, yeah, that is partially why I really always hesitate to do, you know, tell you about producers, but if they're big producers that make good wine or producers that I know we can get one way or the other, then I will try to tell you what they are. But again, it's the, the rules are, are pretty much the same, right? So 
there was, oh, good. I'm glad I got your name right, Siva. So um, the, the rules are pretty much the same. Garbage in, garbage out. Depends on what they're doing with the grapes. Are they doing a lot of monkey business or aren't they? And then are they, is the producer somebody that you can really trust to do a good job? And then some of it comes down to vintage and sight also. So there's this other issue, which is like, let's say that you're a really a young great producer who's starting to get their legs, right? You're starting to do a great job, but you don't have access to the best vintages and the best, I mean, the best vineyards. So then you do the best that you can with what you have until you can afford something better. So there's so many different variables, but seriously, if you have somebody who makes good wine and who uses at least decent grapes, we're going to do fine. Um, Neil, thank you so much for reminding me about Rorero. I have, and I keep forgetting that I have these. I have all these videos and some of them are right, these two or three videos that I have with the, um, I cannot remember his name now, for Giuseppe, I think, from Matteo Correggia in Rorero. The video is so awesome. I am going to make a commitment that tomorrow I will get it up. I will get it up and you all will see it first, but I will get it up. I'm going to, I got, I promised him that I would, you know, give him a real big audience, but I will get it up and, and send it to you all. And then I've got another one with this woman, Denise Marone. If we wind up going to Piedmont in September, which hopefully we will, then we will meet both of these people because they were both, Denise is awesome or Denise, um, but Denise is how you say her name. And then, um, the guy from Correggia will absolutely meet him also. So these people are really cool. So I'm going to post stuff on Rorero tomorrow. MC, I still let me forget. Oh, he's putting it on the calendar. We got nothing else to do, yeah. right? We're just homeschooling our freaking kids. Um, what? On Rorero? Yeah, just post on, just put Rorero post. We'll make it happen. Uh, it's okay. We can make it happen. All right, so that's sort of the deal on Amarone. What else do you all want to talk about? Anybody want to talk about anything else? This is our communal time. Our time to not talk about crazy stuff going on in the world and just talk about wine and whether or not Amarone is good or crappy. I mean, that's really, <laughs> that's what we're talking about tonight. Um, the Zalta story, oh my God, Sam, thank you. The Zalta story, thank you. All right, so I always get sidetracked here. The Zalta story is appalling. So I wrote the article for Epicurious. If you don't know what it is, let me know. I'll post the link or I'll send it to you. Um, I rated Zalto as the best glass. It is. It is absolutely the best glass. It is a ridiculously priced glass. It is worth it. Okay? And Neil, I'll get back to your question in a second. Um, and Zalto writes back to the editor and says... After I wrote like all these nice things about them. They're the best glass. They're amazing. I love them. They make all the wines taste better. There's like, you know, they're, they're fantastic. Everything that we poured into them, they made everything. All this glowing stuff. And then, okay, then they said, well, um, we, we really don't like what you said about the fact that you would not put Zalto in the dishwasher, which I would never ever do okay and I stand by it right no. now I would never ever put Zalto's in the dishwasher because that the uh can you get can you get it out of the out of I the I don't want to touch that thing come on good just go get it it's, it's in that cabinet over there um it's so spindly that if you put it in the dishwasher and the di and the glass is so thin that it would be absurd right so here give it to me no, 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 here, okay, right, yeah, this is it, right, so, like, who's gonna put that in the dishwasher, it's gonna fall, plus, I don't even know what, it's not gonna fit on the top rack, and look how, it's really thin, I mean, it's just ridiculous, and so, I said I wouldn't put it in the dishwasher, and they freaked out, and they were like, we are really angry that you would say that, all of our glasses are, are meant to go in the dishwasher, they're all fit to go in the dishwasher, and so my editor was so cool. Maybe they are safe, Lisa, but I would never do that. My glasses, these glasses are $70. I'm not putting them in the dishwasher. And I've got other stuff in the, unless they were the only thing in the dishwasher, I would not wash them. So I'm sure that it's fine. But what I said in the piece is that I would not do it, right? I would not do it. Like I would not put it in there. And um, yeah, Kelsey says she breaks her crappiest glasses in the dishwasher. Yes, I'll put Spiegelau in the dishwasher because they've never broken. Um, except when my mom was here, she managed to break them. But uh, but everything else, That's she managed to break everything. I know she can break anything. And Kika. 
Oh my God, Kiki. <laughs> our, friend, our friend looks at glasses and breaks them. She breaks our glass every single time she comes over. But the Zaltos, I wouldn't put in and they got so mad. And then I refused to change it. All we did was we added, Zalto says that you can put them in the dishwasher and you can if you want, but I would never do it. And it was just so absurd. It kind of made me feel not loving of Zalto of the company. Cause I was like, you have to be that. I, like, there's so many care. glasses some, out there. Like some marketing DB, whatever. But I know, like, I mean, they make amazing. such a great class. Like, know. they couldn't have just been gracious and said thank you. Yeah. You know? You could be, because they forwarded me the actual blurb, and it was rude. Anyway, it doesn't make me not. I, that, this is one of these things where I don't care. Like, I'm still going to use and buy the glasses. And I would still say any gift opportunity that you have, if somebody is willing to buy you a $70 gift, get one Zalto. It's worth it 100%. All right, Neil was asking again about Rorero. How long does it keep? Rorero is on sandy soils, which is a little bit different from some of the blended marl clay and calcareous soils that Nebbiolo grows on in in um, Barolo. And Barbarasco also does have... Um, Logan, it's like putting actual cash in your dishwasher. Yes, and it's gonna come out the same way, ruined and unusable, right? Um, so, so Rorero is, has sandy soil, similar to Barbaresco, right? And very funny, Neil. Um, similar to Barbaresco. However, Rorero is seen as something that is less prestigious, although it can be very good. Can it age as long as Barolo? No. Can it age as long as Barbaresco? Possibly. Possibly age as long as Barbaresco. What's the threshold on Barbaresco? Really good Barbaresco can age, you know, maybe 15 or 20 years, but it's not as long as, um, it's not as long as like Barolo because it just doesn't have the structure. It doesn't have that clay in the soil or some of the, co the, the heavier components in the soil. So yeah, that lighter stuff, it's gonna work. Um, it's gonna it's gonna age a little bit quicker. So eight, ten years, you'll be fine. I went to a Riedel class. They straight up said you could. Uh oh, can you read? Can you read Carrie's comment from YouTube? Yep. Um, Carrie, I'll get your question in a second. So Neil, uh, I went to Riedel class, and they straight up said that you could put them in the dishwasher if nothing else was in there. Oh, well, I'm glad that they yes. said that because that's super practical. Of course, all of us just want to put one glass yeah, two in. Two glasses. I have good. one Let's glass in the entire, glasses. right, because that's not wasteful at all. So I guess that they got you out of technicality. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> you see, the money like, laundering money thing? Laundering, it's hilarious. Yeah. It's absolutely, <laughs> I know. But I was trying to answer, what I love is that I was trying to answer Neil's thing and then and then he was let he was making jokes about the money laundering too and yeah, i wanted to nice. laugh but i couldn't really yes yeah. i'm glad that you're all interacting with each other because that is exactly what we should be doing this is helpful for us too so thank you i know you know what we should do it on zoom next time though because then you can all talk maybe we'll just do that oh, really? next time yes i did it on i did it on um you YouTube. They can talk to each other? Yes, we can all talk to each other. You know what? Now, okay, wow. next time we're doing it on Zoom. Who's giving, give us all a thumbs up if you want to do it on Zoom. Let's just do it on Zoom so we can all talk to each other next time. Um, that's, I think that's, that's easier. Yes, please, Sam says, yes. All right, good. All right, so next time we'll do it on Zoom. You know, live and learn. Um, I feel like I was doing it, why did I do it on YouTube? Oh, I think I did it on YouTube. Oh, that's nice, the highlight of your day. You know what? As I said, this is going to be a uh, no bad news zone unless it's you love Amarone and I don't love it and that's bad news for you. I'll Zoom with you, Douglas said. Yeah, we're totally going to do Zoom because then we can all talk. That's better. Um, sorry. Sorry for the faux pas. But we're just getting started on these. We're going to be doing them Ooh. consistently. <laughs> we're going to have plenty of time to get this right. Yeah, we got nothing but time, guys. Uh, yeah, we, we, you know, we're, what is it? Somebody just said 20 weeks. I'm like, no, please. I mean, I will be like, yeah, this, to, just to give you a sense of, you know, if you think you're having a bad day, this is what we were doing today. Woohoo! Now we're going to drink a whole bottle of 16% on Moroni. Um, <laughs> that was you though. You did that. Sadly, not loving this on Moroni. Lisa, I told you, but is it too pruney? Is it, is it, 
Oh, are you the one you you got at Trader Joe's? So it's gonna again garbage in, garbage out. That's what we can expect. Wow. Trader Joe's. No, Trader Joe's has some good stuff, but again, amarone is expensive wow. to make. Oh. It's no, it's expensive to make, and I think that the amarone from Trader Joe's is gonna not be as good, and that's why I've never bought it. But I have seen it before, and I I have been, I have thought about it before, just like the Chateau Neuf de Pop. Nope, not gonna happen. Um, from from. Uh, it, shut enough to pop will happen, but not from Trader Joe's. Like fifteen dollars shut enough to pop. No, I'd rather have that Perrin Cote de Rhone that's like the same price, pretty much. But at least it's a brand that you know. Uh, Trader Joe's Bordeaux earlier, totally. You know they get really good deals on Bordeaux. Was it a, Lisa? Did it have a gold label? Because that's the one we always get, and it's it's pretty decent for just a regular wine. It's like twelve bucks or something like that. Um, yeah, Bord wait, wait, uh, Bord what did you say, Bordeaux? Mm -hmm. It was much better. Yeah, we've had good good luck with Trader Joe's Bordeaux. We have had good luck. And actually, if it's a good vintage and the last couple ones have been good, it's the one I recommend for, for $12.99. Yeah. Um, oh, wait. I thought that says $12.99. It can't be $2.99. I don't recommend anything for $2.99. It's um, yeah. Yeah, 2018, I, re I mentioned the 16. So what we have, again. It's exclamation point. $2.99? No, it's $12.99. She just corrected his stuff. It's the new currency. No, so here's the other thing is that Trader Joe's um, or like Bordeaux, Bordeaux and France in general, there's some vintages in some areas where regardless of how, what it is, it's going to be pretty good. So 2015, 2016, 2017 was Lucifer year. That was really hot. So not 2017. Um, 20, 2015, 2016, and 2018, I think I have to go back and check, all really good years. Um, Carrie, have you had wines made in Apacimento from other areas? Um, yes. So, so a lot of people do Apacimento. Castellani Amarone had it during a trip to, to Italy. Very good Amarone. I've had that also. Um, who's the one? My friend, I just met a guy and ate at his restaurant who... Bulioni, I think his name is. He makes some good amarone also. Mario, he's a They're good kinda, guy. Kind of chickeny and kind of salty. Bulioni? Oh, no, no. no. Mario Bulioni, oh. B U G L I O N I. Um, Kevin Trader just helped to introduce me to Chibli. Yeah, I mean, I, Kevin, I totally see that point is that. The only problem is it could also work in the opposite way with Trader Joe's. So like in one way, it's like that could totally open the door for you. Excuse me, if you wind up getting something decent. But there's a flip side to it, which is, for instance, you could have a really gloppy, syrupy, bad, you know, I don't know, Australian or New Zealand wine. Like some of their New Zealand Sauvignon Blancs are sweet. And so that could really turn you off forever. Like you could just be like, no, I'm never going to have that again. And then there's so much more available. So that kind of sucks. But, and then sometimes, sometimes some of the French wines also are just not very high quality. They can taste sharp and the grapes aren't ripe or the grapes are too ripe or they try to fit. I mean, they, they're clearly acidified. I think in that regard, you, you can wind up going wrong. But, um, Honestly, I never gave their wines a shot until you made me feel that 2016 was worth taking a chance. Yeah, Lisa, the other thing is, and I'm sure that you, you've you probably tried them before, but the ones that we get, like, I, 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 I've said this before, I'm pretty honest about it, two things. One, if we're having people over where we know that they don't care what the wine is, um, oftentimes we will buy the Trader Joe's we'll buy Spanish wines and Chilean wines from Trader Joe's. So there's the, um, gosh, what is that brand? Is it Lomas? The, the, I don't know. There's like a Roussan, Roussan, which is really good. And I think they make a, I don't know, they make something else from Chile. It's really, really good. And then also the, there's a, there's a wine, like a wine line, which looks really stupid, but it's good. It's La Granja, which is the Tempranillo blends, Garnacha Tempranillo. They have a couple of them. They're from somewhere in the middle of Spain, but they're actually pretty good. So those are worth it. And if you have people that you need to serve wine to and you are going to drink that wine too, and it's not going to be terrible, it won't be terrible. And that's, I would recommend that. And also they have decent prices on Cote d'Aron always. And I would go for the branded ones instead of the not branded ones. So Google, 
uh, Perrin, definitely go for those. Um, what else? Any other comments? No? No. No. What else you had? What, what else? else? What next, we're going to open it. Next on deck is a, well, I think we're going to have to save it for tomorrow night because Why? we can't let these people, oh, I guess we'll have to have, yeah, well, we do have three cases of wine in there. Right. So we're going to do it again tomorrow night? We can do it again tomorrow night. If you guys are up for it, we'll do it again out? tomorrow night. If you all want to hang out, we'll do Zoom tomorrow night so then you can all talk to each other. Because, like, again, we're just feeling our way through the darkness. Zoom works better. All right, we're going to go watch some bad TV. We're, I hope you all are, are binge watching on something. If you need, we're watching Jane the Virgin. If nobody's ever seen that, really was so put off by it. It's hilarious. Neil's saying we need a Portuguese wine class. Yeah, totally. You know, Neil, I might have to do it like, uh, let me think about that, Neil, because um, I want to do Portugal, but I'm worried that it would not fill unless I added Spain. Maybe do we'll do an Iberian get, Peninsula can class. Can you ask for opinions on how frequently you could be doing wine classes now? Well... I mean, but th these are my, these are, they, we're not going to ask the patrons that they're, 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 you know, they're, we're, we're part of a community. The wine classes, well, some know, of them are going to take you, wine classes. You, you right. No, on. yes. The wine classes are obviously more structured and less bullshitty. Like they're not like what we're doing now, but, um, yeah, no, I mean, I'm thinking about offering them once a week for the general public. Anybody have an opinion on that? And obviously, like I'm offering, I'm going to offer the singles rate, which is a coupon, which I've already told you that. You that. Um, I already mentioned that at the beginning. But um, if anybody's an opinion, you think once a week is, is enough for offering wine classes or do you think, and not for you, you all are getting, we're just doing, again, what I'm calling the bullshitty hangout um, now. But yeah, if anybody has, if you have ideas about it, let me know if you have no opinions. I don't really care. That's not what we're here for. MCS is just trying to get me to use you as a focus group. And I refuse to do that. I refuse. Um, all right. We're going to go. But you all are fantastic. Uh, you're not alone. We're all in it together. And tomorrow, um, we'll do it again tomorrow if you want. And we will do it on Zoom. I think once, once the weekend is a good idea, offering single tickets is a good idea. Suggest under commit and over deliver. Love it, Lisa. Sam, love Portuguese wines. All right, Carrie, you're convincing me. Carrie, can you get Portuguese wines where you are? You're like, you're, Carrie's like my bellwether. If she can get the wines or get access to them where she is, I'm like, okay, then we're gonna make it happen. If she can't, cause she's, again, she's in South Dakota, so hard, a little bit harder to get the wines. Okay. Um, all right, Carrie, if you can get enough Portuguese wines together to, have me do a class. I would love to do it. Oh my gosh, I love Portugal. I mean, and there's the story of Portugal is really like a north south story similar to Italy. So we could really cover like Alvarinho in the north and Douro and Dao in the north and then go south to like Tej and, and Lisboa and stuff like that. We could do port also because you can get some inexpensive port. So, all right, I'll think about it. Portugal's a good one. All right, I'm going to do it. All right, you definitely have found some Vigno Verde, Dora White, Dora Red. All right, maybe, Carrie, maybe what I'll do, since I know you're not opposed to ordering and others won't be, is maybe I'll schedule the Portugal one for a couple weeks from now, and then, um, and we'll get on that. I mean, again, I'm completely flexible. I don't, I'm, I'm up for anything. Okay. All right, so we'll do a Portuguese. So there we go. Now we're going to do a Portuguese wine class. And we'll definitely do a ro the rosé class. I know last year we blew the doors off rosé. It was like ridiculous. Everybody wanted to take that class. So I'll offer that again since it's rosé season. Um, and we can get a bunch of different rosés and, and have that. So Portugal will be in a few weeks. And that's how decisions get made around here. <laughs> Very professional, I know. All right, so we'll see you tomorrow. I think tomorrow we'll, we'll drink that Swartland Syrah. What do you think, MCIs? You've been on quite a Syrah kick. All I want to do is drink Syrah. I love Syrah. I'm not saying it's a bad thing at all. It's a good thing. I know. We had some ones that were, like, less good. I mean, the best were the, the Crow's Hermitage and that Washington one were really the bomb, I think. You know? Mm, well, it's fine. Wow. Wow. The it's Sonoma fine. one did not age like I, like, like I want you know, like I wanted to. Neil's saying he loves that Portugal sticks to its own grapes. Portugal and Spain, 
and Italy. They're not going to be, they will not be bested. Italy faltered for a while, but they came right back around. Hungary too. Now that's the other thing. I want to do a podcast on Hungary, but I, the pronunciation is just like, honestly, it's terrifying. Absolutely terrifying, but I will figure it out. I used to have a friend who speaks Hungarian. I'm still on LinkedIn with her. I might, maybe I'll have her like pronounce it for me and I'll put her pronunciation in where I'm supposed to say it. Wow. <laughs> Bethany saying it. All right, friends, go drink up. Go watch some bad TV. Like I said, Jane the Virgin, hilarious. It's like a funny parody of a telenovela. Anything else you want, let me know. I'm here for you. We're here for each other. We'll see you tomorrow night. All right. Ciao.